We both have things that we are a bit anal about. Hey, keep it PG. <laughs> Society's family unit is in crisis as less and less people are making the commitment of a lifelong partnership together. It has been normalized, encouraged, and easier than ever to just throw in the towel when the going gets tough. With time at a premium, start by spending 20 minutes per week gaining thought-provoking inspiration towards a journey of self-improvement, ultimately improving your marriage, your family, your health, and your home. There's plenty of research to be found on the importance of routines and schedules. Today, we're going to cover morning and evening routines, family meetings, and how we schedule our day as a family. We will also discuss why we need our routines and what happens when we get off track. So anyone who knows us should have recognized by now that we like our structure. Uh, even when we go on vacations, we at least like to have a loose outline so that we can operate within that some spontaneity. So I'm borderline OCD about schedules, uh, but both of us are adamant to have a plan, a schedule, and a routine. That's just how we function. Some examples of how we do our schedules and routine the probably the biggest is our daughter's school schedule. Every Sunday, I sit down and I map out our daughter's homeschool schedule for the week based on her instruction, any extracurriculars that we might have going on that week, based on Ben's work timeline as well. Um, because he does like to have some scheduled learning time with her during the day when he's not in meetings. And also, that schedule is based on her heavy curriculum time being in the morning after our morning walk, because that's when she is the most focused and the most productive. And then um, after lunch, it's a little bit more loose with the reading and educational show and uh, piano lessons, you know, things that she's not necessarily needing to be 100% focused on or learning a new concept or idea. So if you were to see my Google calendar um, for her schedule, it is time blocked, it is color coded, uh, it is something that I have access to, Ben has access to, even Cadence has access to on her individual account. And we go over it with her. We don't mm -hmm. just throw it up on the fridge and expect her to memorize it. it and follow it. <laughs> so we go over it with her. We talk about it before we finalize it as well, just to make sure there's nothing else getting in the way. So it, we found it to be a really useful tool, and then she feels included in the schedule, uh, and I think she really likes the structure. Yes, 100%. Knowing what she's doing. Uh huh. What am I supposed to do? Where am I supposed to be? It's one o'clock. What are you supposed to be doing? And she knows exactly where she's supposed to go to look to figure it out. And it also helps us keep track of timetables for uh, reporting purposes for homeschool. The other type of schedule that we try and keep with our other child is our son, Brayden. Um, he has a morning schedule that he typically wakes up um, about 7 o'clock. We don't really let him go past 7.30 much anymore. You know, that he wakes up, he gets his diaper changed, he gets dressed, and we immediately go out and get his bottle. Well, we do that. He actually rolls around and fights us. And <laughs> it's a big wrestling match. Yeah, first thing in the morning. And uh, and he has a pretty set schedule throughout the day as well. Um, and we started that very early with him as far as feed nap, feed nap. Um, and we've even learned that sometimes things with him will change. Uh, for instance, if he falls asleep on our morning walk, that puts him at a different afternoon nap time. If he doesn't fall asleep on the morning walk, he tends to go um, to sleep before lunch. So we're able to be a little bit flexible on that with him. He also has a very um, somewhat strict evening and bath routine that at 7.30 every single night, he is naked in front of the bath. 
um, at 7.30 every single night. All electronics in our home are turned off, whether it's the TV or music or what have you. Mm -hmm. And the lights get dimmed down and we just start um, getting ourselves ready for bed. Uh, Our daughter... um, you know, make sure that she has her snack by 7.30 and then she brushes her teeth and um, and then she'll usually help help uh, finish up with Brayden. So. Well, and she knows what time we eat every day. Uh, she knows what mm-hmm. time we do certain things at night. Brayden gets excited. He knows when it's bath time. <laughs> uh, you know, he's starting to learn. Um, he'll get a little fussy. You get him in the bathroom, you know, he sees his stuff laying out. He starts getting excited. So we already talked about how our calendar is shared, um, especially with our daughter's homeschool. We don't share our ca- our personal calendar so much. We have one hanging in the kitchen that is like what days our little helper is here and what days we have Girl Scouts and extra clickier things. But it's not as much as it yeah. was early, like last year where it was we had to share when we were on phone calls and, you know, and when you were out of town traveling and stuff like that, yeah, that share it. your share your airplane uh, flight itinerary with me. But other things that we have shared as a family is our shopping list. So that is super important. Um, you know, we have our, our Google system for our home that uh, we're able to say if we're out of something, add it to the shopping list. And uh, that makes it very easy, uh, even for me running around. I don't have to remember to pick up a pen and write it down, uh, which I, is sad in a sense, but it's also kind of a fun thing for Cadence, too. <laughs> At the yeah. same time, that makes it really convenient um, when uh, I'm ordering the groceries or we're out picking the groceries up, we immediately can pull it up on our phone, and it's just efficient, and we're not trying to rack our brains um, what it is. We also use a meal planner. Uh, So uh, before I do the grocery shopping on the weekends, whether that's on Saturdays or Sundays, uh, before I put the order in, because I don't go into a grocery store anymore, (laughs) before I put the order in, we always sit down and plan out our meals. And that is um, posted on our refrigerator as well. And it's usually um, anybody have any requests or cravings that they're having and, um, you know, what do we need to use up? What do we have down in the deep freeze? Uh, what is our schedule like this week? Um, on the days that I have my uh, little helper in the afternoons, I do not cook. So that means it's usually a casserole that I forget to throw in the oven at 4.30 <laughs> to be ready in time for dinner. But one of these days we'll get it. Uh, the other thing that we use is we've used a variety of chore charts. Uh, Cadence has had a chore chart since she was a very little girl. Uh, it, one of those uh, Melissa and Doug with the little magnet things. And we still have it, and we'll probably use it for Brayden. Uh, but we've since uh, moved on to, to lots of different types of chore charts for her right now. We, we have like a quarter and a, um, a, quarter and a, a popsicle stick system. We've <clears> used a, an actual chart where she has to mark off. Um, that different things have different values. So that's definitely evolved. Um, and it has played a big part in that many of the chore, quote unquote, chores that she started with that she was getting paid for, she just does now because it's just part of her routine and it's her responsibility. And so you've probably already filled in some of the gaps, but we've found many benefits with doing these charts and these lists and having things on calendars uh the first one's pretty obvious it's a no-brainer there's definitely a productivity and efficiency gain that we've seen from it and this isn't just because of the kids Uh, it really helps us stay on track as well we're able to not have all that guesswork with what's coming up tomorrow where we got to be where do we got to go and we're able to divide and conquer so to speak. Uh, so that that's a big thing for us is that we know how each day is supposed to go. Mm-hmm. And then we know if we're off track. We know if we need to make up for something so that we're not at the end of the week and we're like, oh, shoot, we totally forgot to do X, Y, and Z. Now all of a sudden we've got to rush around and figure that out, but we've got everything pretty well mapped out for the week. And of course it changes, things come up. But it certainly helps reduce the stress because you don't have to sit here and think 
and try and remember the things that you talked about that you were going to do. We really do try to write a lot of things down when we think of them, but having a list, having a plan is really good. But the routines help too, because with COVID, it really threw everybody off and it was great to be able to have a routine in the morning and night. And we felt better. We felt more productive waking up and we felt normal just having some of our regular routines. And that could be something as simple as brushing your teeth, but even trying to get dressed. And it's that one's fallen off. Everybody wears leisure wear and <laughs> um, comfy clothes for the most part. Make so, your bed every morning. But, but yeah, make your bed mm-hmm. and try to eat at a regular time. Mm-hmm. Go to sleep at a regular time. Keep yourself on track. So it also really helps us and helps our kids have some structure and to stay organized I don't know how many times if I get off track, I find myself not brushing my teeth till later in the day. And I'm like, oh, shoot, I completely forgot. Or Mm -hmm. we haven't showered in a few days. We (laughs) might want to do that. Yeah. Um, So we tried to start something more complicated, like a pretty strict cleaning schedule at one time. We still have a list of all the things that we need to clean, but there's no way we're ever getting to that. Uh, we just try to take parts of it at a time when we can. Um, but it definitely, it still helps to go through some of those practices that you, you know, you make things as predictable as you can, as consistent as you can, and it builds some momentum and gets some confidence up. Okay, I've already done these things. It's seven o'clock in the morning. I feel productive Mm -hmm. and now I can get, you know, myself going even more. And so that way you're not always just relying on the coffee to kick in. But we've also found that it helps prioritize. So that's one big thing we've had to do because we can't get everything done every day. We can't touch every goal and every you know, thing we set out to do. So we have to prioritize. That's just part of good time management skills. Everybody has the same 24 hours in a day. Yeah. Nobody has more time than anyone else. It's, it's what do you value that you're spending that time on. That leads to some of the challenges, and one of them is a little bit contradictory to what I just said, is consistency. (laughs) So while it's great if you can keep it going to provide that consistency, um, when it comes to maintaining a routine or a schedule, even for the week, consistency in your routine is difficult with kids and work schedules. Everything that's going on right now, it's really hard to be consistent with those things, whether it's a weight loss goal that you're trying to walk twice a day, you're trying to diet, or you have a sleep schedule you're trying to keep, you know, things come up and we're human. So it's really hard to not get a little bit stressed out when you're off track, you're not getting things done, stuff keeps piling up. That can be a little bit challenging. And part of it is just the interruptions of life. And there's going to be surprises no matter what. Uh, for instance, for us right now, a case in point, a dryer goes out when you're in the middle of doing laundry and you suddenly have to shift. You have to pivot and make, you know, make it work. And so there's many unexpected things that come up with just having a house and ha- you know, living, living this life. You're, nothing's going to go exactly how you planned it. You have to be able to adjust your schedule too, which we're adjusting right now as well. Um, with my workload increasing, I'm adjusting my schedule to waking up earlier so that I can get it done. Um, what worked three months ago doesn't exactly necessarily work today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And kids will be kids. They certainly fight the schedule and the routine quite a bit. I think (laughs) they like it, but they also are kids and you know, they're a little unpredictable. Um, we have found a few other things with being too strict on our routines or our schedules. So I've mentioned the stress. It really can lead to some burnout. Uh, you get fatigued doing the same thing every day. I think it's just people, our brains just don't like the exact same thing every day. And Mm -hmm. you can get a little burnout. You can start going, geez, nothing's going the right way. Nothing goes like it should. Why does this keep happening? Um, I feel like I'm just doing the same thing like every day in day out oh my gosh there's another week gone and mm-hmm. s- something we found that we fall into this trap with the scheduling is the lack of flexibility i think we over 
estimate in the future how much we can get done and how quick things will be Mm -hmm. that never fails whether it's getting the kids loaded up and going somewhere that's going to take three times as long as you (laughs) think it will Uh, so if it's a house project that's probably four times as long as you Mm -hmm. think it'll take uh, because something will go wrong it's not going to look like that youtube video you watched um so that's just something that we found that's a that's a pro tip that you know, the more you schedule, the more you feel in control, but sometimes it can really get away from you. You've got to stay nimble and don't get stressed. And the thing to remember, too, is that kids don't need to be overstructured, but they do thrive with a solid foundation that they can rely on. We have seen this immensely with our daughter and her homeschool schedule. She has she has always been a smart and gifted child, but with us switching to homeschooling with her and, um, and her schedule and she's, she is in charge of a little bit of it and she helps us with it. It, they can just build confidence and gain more momentum, uh, with schoolwork, with chores, with other planned Mm -hmm. activities. She is a completely different girl than she was eight months ago. So kids need some structure and controlled environments that they can try and fail without big consequences. They can fall down and they can learn to get back up. So if Cadence doesn't stick to her schedule, she learns what she misses out on later in the schedule, which is more of the fun things later in the day. So the call to order this week for everyone is answer this question do you have structure in your life do you have a balance so you don't want structure for the sake of structure but you need some sort of heading some sort of structure to hold you up so we have developed some resources that we've researched over time and we'll make those documents available uh, to hopefully help you with your routines and lists and schedules But develop your own system, develop your own resources that work for you, and hopefully we can help provide just an example to help get you started. Sometimes that's all you need. And so this will really help ensure that you're on track to achieve your goals, whether it's your personal goals or goals for your family. But it's really important that you remember to have a plan B when you get off track or you get off balance because we can guarantee you it will happen. Inevitably. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. If you're ready for your marriage and family dynamic to thrive and not just survive, all it takes is 20 minutes or less joining us each week. It begins with a journey of self-improvement while you sit in the carpool lane, commute to work, squeeze in a workout, or get halfway through folding that laundry pile. Be sure to check out the blog at thefamilyorder.com and follow us on Facebook at The Family Order. If you're ready to start your journey, be sure to click subscribe so you don't miss new episodes every Monday.